Jesus, Lord, we worship you today. We praise you today. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us breath in our lungs. Lord, that we can come and, and worship you together in unity and one accord, Lord God. We thank you, God, for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for your hand upon our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for your favor and your mercy and your grace. And Lord, we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Holy Spirit, we invite you to this place. We say, come, Holy Spirit, fill this house your power and your presence today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone who agrees said, amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a fist bump this morning. Amen. Tell them glad to see them this morning. Hallelujah. Let me know our God reigns. Amen.
within me. I can't describe it, but I believe I feel peace.
We sing glory, glory, glory to the King. Jesus, we sing glory and honor and praise to you, God. Oh, all the glory, all the praise, all the worship goes to you. There's none like you. For you are our cornerstone. You're the chief cornerstone of our lives. And we know as we build on you, we cannot be shaken. Our foundation is in you, Jesus. You are our foundation, for we are founded on the rock. That no matter what storms come, what winds blow, what earthquakes shake, you, God, are our stable and firm foundation. And we give you praise today. Knowing that no matter what news we get from the doctor, from the, from the TV, from the radio, from the internet, good or bad, Lord God, we will not be shaken. For you are still God and you are our leader. You're our king. And you, God, rule and reign in our lives. For we are under your authority. We submit ourselves to you, God, and we say, Lord, lead us, guide us, direct our steps. Let them be ordered of you. Let us not turn to the left and to the right, but stand firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that we will be standing when it all is said and done, and the earth may be dissolved like snow, but God, your people will still be standing because our trust is in you, our chief cornerstone, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Come on, sing this song from your heart this morning. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My hope is been on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. That name above all names, amen? Come on, sing that verse again. My hope, my hope is been on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. Oh my God. 
you are God. We magnify you. We magnify you.
let heaven come over our nation's capital. Oh, let heaven come. Let heaven come over the White House. Oh, let heaven come over our nation, over the state of Texas. Let heaven come over the city of Bryan College Station. Let heaven come over our homes, over us, wherever we go. That every step we take would be ordered of you, God. Let heaven come. Oh, we surrender and submit to you. Let our steps be your steps. Let, our, let your steps be our steps. Let your steps be our steps. For we follow you. Not our steps be your steps, no. Let your steps be our steps. Lord, that we don't waver to the left or to the right. And let heaven come. Let heaven come. Lord, let revival fall on us. God, we desire revival. Let it start here. Today. Right now. And perhaps it's Valley Cowboy Church. Let revival start today, right now. This is a new year, a new season. In Jesus' name, let it fall on us today. Amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, let's give God a praise and a hallelujah. Let's give him all the glory and praise this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout glory. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. You may be seen it if you can. Wow. I was, uh, everybody make it to church safely this morning. Amen. We got some, some nasty weather going on outside. And um, you know what? We got some good weather happening in here. Amen. We got some Holy Ghost weather, some Holy Spirit weather, amen? God's doing something in us and in this church, and it starts right here, amen, and we're going to receive everything God has. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Well, if, uh, if it's your first time to be with us, we want to say welcome to the house of God, amen? I'm so glad you came, and I want to say a thank you to all the guys at Brad and, the, and uh, those that served this morning his team and that uh, did the breakfast this morning. Let's give a let's give our truck wagon team a round of applause this morning. Amen. They show up early and they they cook for us and we're we're, we're doing this the second Sunday of every month. Amen. And for those of you who don't know, praise God. I want to give God all the glory. You know, uh, Thursday a week ago. I was uh, ended my last treatment of chemo, amen, my last treatment, praise God. So it's all said and done, over with. Still got a little bit of my, my, my dry, I got some dry mouth going on, so you're probably going to see me drinking a lot of coffee and water so I can keep talking clearly because it affects my tongue and my saliva glands. But praise God, it's all coming back, amen. Getting stronger every day, and I just put all my trust in God that he's brought me through. And he'll, and you know what? And he's done what he's done for me. He'll do the same thing for you. He is no respecter of persons. Amen. You stay faithful to him, no matter what is thrown your way. Amen. Fair or unfair, you keep praising God in the midst of it, and he will bring you through. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, y'all bear with me if I if my my speech gets a little bit slurred this morning. I'm preaching this morning. Y'all just say well. It's coming. Y'all say, y'all just start praying for me. Amen. Say, speech return. Amen. And uh, so anyway, we want to say thank you for being here. I know y'all, y'all, y'all went, came a lot. Everybody came through some nasty weather to be here this morning. And I pray it's extra blessings for y'all. Those of you that are watching online, we thank you for watching. Uh, share it on your Facebook. Uh, do a watch party. Share it and let your uh, friends and family know, hey, this is a good church to watch on, uh, on Facebook. And, uh, 
we're glad to have you. Amen? Amen. I believe we have a few announcements this morning. Ms. Christina, come on up, our administrator. Uh, grab this mic. I don't need that one right down there. I've got this one. Are you on? Yeah, I'm on. Oh, praise God. Man, come I've on. got a hot mic. Y'all better watch out. I'm not even stuttering this morning. I'm trying to make sure that the microphone's working. So praise God. Um, um, our scripture reading this morning comes to you, comes to you from uh, Psalms 89, 1 through 4. It says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known for your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness shall establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to my servant David. Your seed I will establish forever and build up your throne to all generations. So it's promises that he's going to build up our throne to all generations. I think Pastor Will pretty much covered all of our announcements except for a couple of things. We got baptism Sunday after church. So if you want to stick around for that, we'll be in the foyer area. I believe we're going to do a Facebook Live for that. I know a couple of people have asked if we're going to record that. So I'll do a, probably a Facebook Live for that. So that way other people that aren't with us will be able to see that. Um, and also mark your calendars for February the 7th. We'll be having baptisms. It's normally the first Sunday of every month. And so if you want to get baptized, you want to see me after church, just sign up for that as well. Um, also, we'll have Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting coming up this Wednesday at 630. Um, also, for those of you that do not know, we have our own QR code. I think I kind of hit on that last week. But just a, this is like, it's really neat. You just pull up your camera, click on the QR code, and it takes you to the PayPal. Me and Mary Ann were checking it out this morning, and it is like, it's so like technology, but um, it's great. Uh, so you'll want to do that as well whenever we have our tithes and offerings. Also, the children this morning, we're going to keep them over here in the building instead of separating nursery and children's church. So whenever we dismiss, they'll be across the foyer as well after church. And I believe that is it. Amen. Let's receive our tithes this morning. Amen. Test, 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 test. Good morning. Hey, uh, everybody, that if, that if y'all want to give checks this morning, you can make it out to uh, Brazos Valley Cowboy Church or BVCC. Uh, we have security uh, uh, paying online. If y'all want anybody watching online can uh, give online. And then also at the back here, we uh, can take uh, your debit cards or credit cards. And uh, But uh, if you want, as I'm just kind of giving a word this morning real briefly, that I left my glasses at home, so if I, I can't really read in here, because if I do, uh, oh well, here goes my excuse. She got a hodo did the no buff hodo. Oh God, how many guys know God's got a sense of humor? You know, if, uh, yeah, he does. If you don't believe it, look at yourself in the mirror and laugh and point. Morning, but uh, uh, if y'all want to go ahead and get your checks ready and your cash and any of your change, and and y'all can can come on up as I'm I'm giving a brief word this morning. I really didn't know what to do and everything, but how many of you guys know the Holy Spirit shows up? If you're walking and you're being led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you, guide you, and strengthen you, right, Larry, in all of your ways. Okay, and you, you're not walking by yourself. You're because uh, the Holy Spirit is there. And if you're watching online and, and you're going through something today and all kinds of troubles, we do every day. But let me tell you what, as you start leaning to God and not to your own understanding, uh, Bo, and trying to figure it out and make your own way and everything, but really bring, present uh, each situation to the Lord and ask the Lord to show you and lead you and guide you through, through what you're going through. We all go through something. And as you go through this, Jay, it helps you to build your faith up, doesn't it? Whenever you're going through an un, un, uh, looks like a bad situation or what we're going through in our nation and all the prophets are saying, don't give up. Guys, it's time for the body of Christ to press in, pray like never before because our, our national security is on the line like never before. We are not against Democrat or Republican or Independent, but it is a spiritual warfare. There is evil at work right now in our nation to overthrow and, and to, to destroy the body of Christ. And it's a time to press in, turn off the Fox News, turn off all the news, one America, and get before God and let God show you how to pray and how to, and, and how to focus in. God's focused in. 
All these others got their own agenda. God's got his agenda, and I don't want to know what Fox News has got or what American News has got. I want what God has got for us, and he will show us how to pray and press in. It's not over. It's not over yet. But I just want to tell you guys a little bit. Of course, Will, I said, Will, I really don't know. He said, just keep real simple Malachi 3, you know, and everybody can go to that. Bring the whole tithe of the storehouse that you all from me and everything. But I went back, and I started looking in Nehemiah 10, and you can go back into that. Back there then, they didn't have a lot of money, and they, but what, what it was, they had to be obedient into the ordinances of God. And what they did, Larry, they gave their first fruits of whether it be grain or cattle or whatever. And the tenth means the tenth, one tenth. So if you make $100, give God $10. You make 1000 give him 100 You, If you win the lottery, $3 million, bring, bring uh, 300000 up here. We'll take it, you know, but, or, or 600000 whatever. But uh, you just can't outgive God. And, and I'm telling you guys something right now from, from experience in our business that we've given, and I'm not tooting our own horn, but we learned a long time ago that we cannot outgive God. He says, and, and you know what it is, guys? It's, it's going back, Will, in it on the Word of God and standing on the Word because what does the Word say, Bob? That he will supply seed to the sower. Right, amen. He'll supply the seed to the sower. If we're obedient as what the Israelites did and they brought their first fruit out of obligation and out of wanting to please God. And it came back in. So what was it? It's branded into the storehouse. So it, so there's plenty. As you bring into the storehouse here to, to Brad's Valley Cowboy Church, are we able to go out and do a lot of great things? A lot of places that we go, you might not be able to go, but your money can go. If you don't have the money, give of your time. Tithe of your time. Tithe, man, Larry needs help out here uh, mowing the grass. When we get this arena up and going this summer, we're going to need help out yes, there. Tithe yeah. of your Come time. On. Come on. You know, tithe is a tithe, a tenth. You know, and, and if you put more than, than a tenth, or a tenth, or a third, and you're in heaven. Battery went out, man. Thank God for good batteries. <laughs> well, but as you give, God's going to give back to you. He's going to honor that. And uh, I, I'm telling you guys something. God's wanting to bless you. And because sometimes we're not obedient in what God's word says, it's not that he doesn't want to bless us, but it's that we restrict our own blessings. We restrict our own blessings. God cannot do make anything happen that's not in his word. That's not in his word. And though there's more power in the word of God, man. You think what well, he just spoke a word and the world existed. Can you imagine that? He can speak a word right now, Mark, and just everything can be dissolved. We could be blown out of here in an instant. Come on. There's more power in one drop of blood of Jesus, Bob, than any nuclear bomb, thermal nuclear bomb. I'm telling you guys something. Put your hand into the God's hand, into the Lord's hand, and let him lead you, guide you, and you strengthen. See what happens in this church. It'll blow the doors off. Amen. You know why? We're, everybody's looking for an answer. Everybody's wanting to, God to bless us, but sometimes we restrict that on blessings and what we don't do or what we don't allow God to do. Lean, what the word mark is, I'm telling you this today right now. Lean not to your own understanding, but you lean to what God is. God, I'm not moving till I know what you've got going on for me. I'm not moving. I'm not taking a step because I don't want my will to be done, but I want your will to be done. What does it say up here? Bringing heaven to earth as it is in heaven. So if you get your checks ready and you and cash and, and change and everything together, we're going to take up an offering. I just want to pray over the offering real quick this morning. Father, we thank you for the giver, for the sower. Father, your word says that you will supply seed to the sower, Father God. And Lord, and, and, and it says, bring the whole tithe in the storehouse. See that there's not more than enough. And see that I don't pour open the floodgates of heaven, that your barns will not be able to contain it. And this is the only spot that God says, test me in this. Yeah. Test me in this. Because as you give in obedience, as you give in faithfulness, as you if not well, man, I just need to pay my light bill. Well, God will supply more than your light bill. 
Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the body. I thank you for Pastor Will. Guys, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but Pastor Will was roping yesterday. Five or six months ago, man, he was fighting for his life. Yesterday, he's roping. You know, God will give you the desires of your heart. And Father, we just thank you for this church, Father, that we will be a light, that we'll be a catalyst to be able to go out, Father God that you will anoint everyone here, Father, that wherever we go, that we will have a ministry, Father, whether it be Walmart or Sonic or wherever. God, that you will equip us with the word, the right word for the right time for the right person. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Okay, we're going to do our profession. Yeah, y'all stand Thank up. You. Let's do our confession this morning. All right. Let's do it. Thank you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales, and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, accounts and dividends, gifts and surprises, finding money we can keep, debt cancellation, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs and all of our church's financial needs so that we will have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Bring the time this morning. Dismiss the kids at this time. All the children's church. If uh, you have, if they, those that are still in here, twelve or under, go ahead. Uh, we're going to dismiss them at children's church. Amen. Before we get started this morning, let's just open up in a word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord God, for your word. Lord, that is sharper than any two-edged sword. Slicing down to the marrow. Lord, I thank you that your word does not return void. Lord, I thank you right now as we stand here today, we can stand on your word, knowing it is unshakable. It is unmovable. Your word, God, is a light unto our path. Your word stands the test of time. Your word cannot be undone. For Lord, every door that you open, no man or no one can shut. 
Lord, every door you close, no man and no one can open. Lord, I thank you for it right now. We pray, Lord, that you would open our ears today to hear your word and receive it in our spirit. Receive it in us, Lord God, right now to be applied to our lives today. Lord, let us have understanding, your understanding in our lives. Lord, I pray our minds, would we would have the minds of Christ today. And we surrender and submit to you, knowing, God, you are on the throne. You are still the Alpha. You will always be. You are still the Omega. You will always be. You are the beginning and the end. And you reign and rule. And nothing can change that. Nothing. No one, nothing can change that you are always God and always will be. And you have complete and total sovereignty in our lives, oh God. We surrender and submit to you in Jesus' name over this word today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said? Amen. amen, amen. Well, I want to I want to talk to y'all about what I want to talk to y'all about this morning a little bit is about overcoming. And you know, we are overcomers. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're an overcomer. I don't care what you have faced in life up to this point. God has brought you here today. If you're here in this church body today, you have overcome something this morning. You overcame some rain. You overcame some sleet. You overcame some bad weather. Maybe some of you overcame an alarm clock that didn't quite go off. And you drug in here a little bit late. Maybe you overcome, man, I wish I would have got here a little earlier so I could have got some of that good breakfast. Amen. But if you're here today, or if you're watching online today, you, you've overcome. You, you woke up this morning. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. You were able to wake up this morning, and God's giving you another hour, another minute on planet Earth to give him glory, to give him praise, to give him honor. Come on. Amen. amen. amen? And I don't care what your situation is or what you've been through in life or where you've come from. Today, I want you to know today, you are an overcomer. God has placed that in his people. God has placed that in each and every person that he calls his children. He has placed an overcoming spirit in them. Say that with me today. I am an overcomer. I don't care where you've come from, where you've been. Praise God. I know where you're going. We're moving into the complete and total will of our God. There's no better place to be than in God's will. I don't care where you've been, what you've been through, what valleys you've been under or in, but praise God, it was only a season. Right. Praise God, there's an end to every season. Right. And I want to encourage you today, if you're in a season that's been dark, you've been in, or if you're in a season that's been rough, just hang on to your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. You stay focused in Him. Don't waver to the left or to the right in the middle of that season, and God will bring you through. Amen? And He's going to bring this nation through. I'm, I, you can take it to the bank. God's going to bring us through. Whatever we face today, whatever, whatever it looks like tomorrow, God's not going anywhere. Right. And I want you to know that today. Our God doesn't leave us. Jesus said, I ne I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Do you believe his word or do you not believe his word? Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you're in the hospital, if you're in the prison. I don't care where, if you're in captivity in your own home because there's a lot of people that are in bound and cap captive in their own homes. But God says, I'll never leave you. Jesus said, I'll never forsake you. Jesus said, I have to go. He ascended into heaven and he said and, uh, that, the, that I have to go so the comforter can come. That's, right. That's God, the Holy Spirit. He's the one that lives inside of us. He is the God that when God, when God the Father spoke this world into existence, it was God the Holy Spirit that moved and hovered over the face of the deep. Amen. And when he said, let there be light, God the Holy Spirit, boom, made it happen. When God the Father said, let there, let there be everything, that in all creation, it was God the Holy Spirit, boom, made it happen. Because they are three in one. And the Bible says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you and inside of me. That's right. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. So God, Jesus is our redeemer. Say that with me today. Jesus, Jesus. is my redeemer. Right. You, re you understand that, what redemption is. It's bringing you back from something. 
Amen? You've been redeemed. You've been brought back. It, it doesn't matter what you've done in your past. It doesn't matter what you've what issues you've had. Maybe you made a lot of wrong decisions. I know I have. Amen? We all have. All have sinned and fallen short of God. There is not one that is perfect. Praise God for his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness. That You know what? When we say to God, Lord, forgive me. I surrender my life to you. Lord, I messed up royally. And you know what? He is faithful to forgive us. He is faithful to put us back on track. He is faithful to get us back on the right road. Amen? I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how, how much. Uh, it, it doesn't matter where in life you are. If you're willing to say, God, forgive me. Boom, he puts you back where you need to be. You have been predestined to conform to the image of his son, Jesus. You've been predestined, amen, to, to, to see God's will done in your life. Hallelujah. You know what? It doesn't matter what's happening in our world today. I know what's happening in my world. I don't care what's happening outside in Washington, in our state capital, wherever, anywhere and everywhere in this world. It doesn't matter. What's happening in your world? What's happening in your sphere of influence? What's happening in the, in the atmosphere that you have created in your life? See, we, we create an atmosphere by spending time with God. There's an atmosphere that is around us. That God, that, that the Holy Spirit radiates and brings it around us. There's an atmosphere that, you know what, we are immune to the things of the world. When we are right with God, when we are, when we are in the middle of God's will, I don't care what's happening in the world, God puts us in this bubble of immunity. Just like with your finances, it says to give, and it will be given back to you. Press down, shake together, running over. You do your finances the way God tells you to do them, and you know what, you don't have to worry about the economy. You do it God's way, and God says, okay, you are subject to my authority over your finances. Not what's happening in, in the economy or on the stock market. No. When you do things God's way, just as Bobby was talking, Alamalachi, give and it shall be given. Uh, you know, give all the tithes and store. There's promises. You know what? And then your, your finances are subject to God's ways, God's protection, and God's going to make sure you prosper in an un unprosperous world. Amen? Just with your health. Amen. You keep following God. You keep proclaiming God's blessings and God's will over your life and your health. Boom. God's going to, you're going to see that. God's going to, you're going to see protection over you. Amen. One example. Y'all remember Daniel in the Bible. In the Old Testament. Daniel. You can go to the book of Daniel and read all about him. And, uh, but Daniel, he was in a, if y'all remember, the, the children of Israel, to make a long story short, were brought captive. They were captive and brought out of their own land, and they were held captive into a, into a foreign land. And yet Daniel stayed faithful to God. Daniel stayed faithful to God, and it didn't matter what land he was in or who his authority was or who, who was in government, who was in authority in the government and who was in authority over uh, the people and they were in captivity they were in slavery but Daniel stayed faithful to God and stayed faithful in the midst of his circumstances and God blessed him no matter where he was no matter what was happening or what king he sat under God blessed Daniel because Daniel stayed faithful to God it didn't shake Daniel up come on somebody say amen he was not shaking. You know, the Bible says God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I don't care what the news says. It doesn't matter. If you got fear, that's not a God. If you're shaking, that's not a God. You can say, I don't care what's going on. My God's got me. My God's got my family. My God's got me. Amen. My God's got my church. Hallelujah. Say that with me today. Say, my God's got my church. My Amen. We're not going anywhere, folks. Because God's got us. And see, it talks about Daniel. I mean, Daniel was under king. I mean, this kingdom changed hands several times. And yet Daniel stayed one of the top advisors when he was a slave. And he was a, and, and not even a part of that kingdom. It says in, uh, and this is Daniel chapter 5, verse 12. It says, 
Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining uh, enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Ma uh, Melchizedek now led, da let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Verse 13. Then, then Daniel was brought in before the king. Why? Because God had given him wisdom that stood out. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is the one of the captives of Judah, whom my father king brought from Judah? I have heard, listen to this, this is verse 14 of Daniel chapter 5. I have heard of you. Wow. I've heard of you. Here you are, a captive from a foreign land. You're under the second, uh, 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 the a son of the king, not even the original king that captive, brought him captive. He said, I've heard of you. That the spirit of God is in you. Now here is a heathen king. He's in a captive in, in a land that he that's not his own. Come on. A place that he didn't grow up in. A place that he didn't have any influence in growing up. You know, you, you grow up in a small town, you got some influence. People know who you are because you grew up in that family. Or your family's been in a town for years after year after year and, and, and generation after generation and people know your name because you're a granddaddy, your great granddaddy or your daddy, amen, that's been passed down and you haven't moved out of town, you stayed right there and you're, that's called your hometown. People know who you are in your hometown, amen. And maybe you were a football star, maybe you are a baseball star in high school, but you, uh, you, uh, they know who you are. But here you are, you got Daniel that's a captive, been brought in from a foreign land, and yet, he says, I've heard of you. Why? Because the Spirit of God was in him. I've heard of you. And he recognizes, this king, this foreign king recognizes, he says this right here, I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you. Woo! Man, what an honor. When somebody says, looks at you and says, man, you're a man of God. You're a woman of God. I see the Spirit of God all over you, Teresa. I said, oh, man, I see the Spirit of God all over you. Wow, I, I, I see the Holy Spirit radiating from your life. I see it. That's, that's letting that light shine. That's allowing the Holy Spirit to radiate. When, when people do you wrong, do you, how do you respond? That's the test. We go through tests every day. How will you respond to adversity? How will you respond when somebody does you wrong? How will you respond when somebody does you dirty and you don't deserve it and you know you don't? That's the test. And God, and the, the, what the enemy means for evil, God turns it around to bring good. And you have a chance to say, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing. I don't care what somebody said or is trying to do. I'm going to stay on the high road. And you know what? You stay on the high road and God sees. Daniel had every right in the world's eyes to shake his fist at God. Daniel had every right in the world's eyes to say, you brought me out of my hometown. You brought me out of a land. You brought my people captive. He had every right to shake his fist at God and be mad at God. And, 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 and you know, in the world's eyes, he had a right, not, not in God's eyes. But when he chose to always do the right thing, to take the high road, to do the right thing, to say the right thing, God sees and God honors. When you feel like you've been unjustly treated, that's a test. Yeah, we, we fail. But praise God, he doesn't just give us one chance. He doesn't give you a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. He's waiting for you to say, God, I'm sorry. He, he, you know what, he'll give you chance after chance waiting on you to do the right thing. He'll give you chance after chance, waiting on you to, to, to realize, man, I messed up really. I need, I, I, I need to pass this test because I'm tired of going around the same old mountain over and over and over again. You know, the children of Israel stayed in that desert for a long time, 40, over 40 years, because they, they couldn't get it right. 
They kept failing the test. And you know what? Finally, they got to cross over the River Jordan into the Promised Land. Finally, they passed the test. But I don't know about you, but I want to pass the test the first time. I don't want to wander around in a wilderness wasting my life away. Guys, we've been given one life to live here on earth. You've been given one life. Amen. And I praise God today. I can stand here today believing God's word that says my, 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 my latter days are going to be greater than my former days. Come on. Somebody needs to get a hold of this right now. Somebody needs to, to grab hold of this word. And like Job, say, my latter days are going to be greater than my former days. I didn't go, what I, go through what I went through for no reason. I wasn't, I, I didn't go through everything, all the hell that the devil tried to bring upon me for no reason. You know what? God takes a bad situation and he turns it into something good. If we will understand and stay faithful to him. But it says, I've heard that the spirit of God is in you. And that light, and that light, listen, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you, Daniel. This is a foreign king in a foreign land. Recognizing God's hand upon Daniel's life when he's not even from that country. He's a slave. Woo! Somebody needs to get a hold of this. In verse 6, our chapter 6 of Daniel. You know, he, he, the king recognized what was in Daniel. But there was a plot against him. Y'all remember? All those governors and satraps and, you know, all them high folks in, in government. They were all against him. They were trying to plot a way to get him removed. And it says this, but it says, then, then this Daniel, well, let, me, let, me, let me just start in verse 1. Guess what? Another king took office. Another king. This is the third king that Daniel was under in this far and distant land. Then, king, then uh, it says, it pleased Darius, here's the new king, to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to meet over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors of whom Daniel was one. Okay, here's Daniel, a slave. And yet, he's placed one of three over all the people that weren't slaves, the actual governors and satraps and all these high people in government. And over these three governors, which Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them. Here we are. For these people have to give account to Daniel. So that the king would suffer no loss. Verse 3. I want you to grab this. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because, listen to this, an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave him, uh, and gave through to this settling over the whole realm. Wow. I want you to know today, wherever you are in life, God's wanting to give you a fresh start. God's wanting, you may say, Pastor Will, I've been on the wrong road for a while. You know what? Say, God, forgive me. It's that easy. Get on your knees. Get out and throw your hands up towards heaven. And understand that we've all fallen short. Get rid of the pride. Amen. Get rid of the pride. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Get rid of the pride. Because it's keeping you from being where God wants you to be. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. God wants to bring his glory and his power and his understanding into your life. Amen. But we have to surrender our lives completely and totally to him and do the right thing when the wrong thing is done. Yeah, you might have been cheated. You might have been hurt. But 
you do the right thing and God will honor you. God will bring you to a place of honor. God will bring you to a place of influence. I'm going to tell you something. There's no influence that, God, that, that anybody can bring in your life than the influence that God can bring. God wants to use you in a big way. It's just like Joseph. He might have been in prison for a long time. But God was preparing him in that prison cell. Amen. So that the, he could listen to the, 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 the dreams of the faker and the cupbearer. And he was at that place in that time, at the right place in the right time, even in a prison cell. Then when the time was right, God brought him out and he became second in command over all of Egypt. And saved all the land in his own family. And you know what? His own plant, plant family didn't deserve it. They're the ones that sold him into slavery. They're the ones that faked his death and lied to their father and said, a, a, animal, a wild animal killed our brother. They threw him in a pit and they sold him into slavery and they thought he was dead and gone. They totally disowned him. They totally not just disowned him, but totally did the worst of the worst. And he stayed a slave all the way up until he became in the palace under Pharaoh. Why? Why? Because he stayed faithful to God and continued to do the right thing even though he didn't deserve what he got. You know what? Jesus didn't deserve what he got. He took all the sins of the world. He took your sin. He took my sin. My sins of yesterday, my sins of today, and my sins of tomorrow. He took them on the cross. And he was a man, he was God, he was, oh my goodness. He could have called 10,000 angels to pull him off the cross, but he surrendered to God, his, the Father's will. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he sweated drops of blood because he knew the agonizing pain he was about to go through for you and for me. But he did it anyway. He didn't deserve it. But yet he went to the cross. For you and for me. And you know what? Jesus was our example. He took some stuff that he didn't deserve. And it saved the whole world. And when you can take some stuff that you don't deserve. And you praise God in the midst of it. And you know God's going to bring you through. Guess what? There's going to be a world around you that's going to see it. And they're going to be saved through you. And your example, because your example points them to Jesus. Amen? Your example points them to Jesus. Everything we do needs to point somebody to Jesus. Every decision we make, every word that proceeds out of our mouth needs to point somebody to Jesus. That's why it's so important to watch the words that come out of your mouth. Watch how you treat people. Watch how you respond. When you pass the test, when wrong has been done to you. And we have to go through around that mountain one more time. You know what? Situations are going to arise. But don't let it get you down. Don't let it get you depressed. Understand, all right, this is a setup. I'm getting set up for something good in my life because I'm going to pass this test. I'm going to stay faithful to God in the midst of it. Amen? Don't have a pity party. I'm going to tell you what, I'm believing that this new year, oh yeah, and it, it looks pretty crazy on the news, but I'm believing this is a year for revival. I'm believing that the church house is going to fill up because people are going to see they need God. You know, when everything's going good, everything's going, everybody's happy, it's crazy how people kind of drift away from God. But when everything starts, looks like trouble, oh, everybody starts... Oh, God, help us, help us, God. We need to be saying, oh, God, help us every day when everything's going great. But I praise God that Romans 8, 28 says, All things work together for good to those who love God. Do you love God this morning? All right. Do you believe all things are going to work for you for good? To those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew... 
This is Romans 8, 28, 29 through 31. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I want to give you some comfort today. Maybe you've had a lot stolen from you. Maybe a lot of years from your life have been taken by the enemy. You stay faithful to God and God will restore. God will restore. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 25, in verse 26, I'm going to end with this. It says this, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. God wants to bring restoration in your life. Amen? Lord God, let your restoring power flow into us right now. Y'all stand on your feet with me right now. Lord, let your restoration begin as we surrender to you. Lord, let that restoration process as we take a step of repentance and we say, God, forgive us. Where we've fallen short. Restore to us, God, what's been stolen. Lord, your word says in Psalms 23, 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In Jeremiah 30, 17, Lord, your word says, For I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal, heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. And Lord, your word says in Psalms 51, 12 through 13, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, then will I teach transgressors the ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Hallelujah. Lord, let us be used by your will. Lord, let us be used Holy Spirit by you to reach others. Lord, as we stand here today, Lord, I pray if there's anything in our lives, any sin, anything keeping us from stepping forward into your promises, into your will. Lord, reveal it to us now so we can repent of it. And say, Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. Reveal it to each and every one of us. Those that are here today, those that are watching online, Lord, reveal it to us so we can get on our knees before you throw our hands up and say, God, we are sorry. We repent. We turn away from what that old man. We turn away from those bad decisions. We turn away. And Lord, I'm, I thank you that you are faithful to give us a fresh start. For we have been predestined to conform to your image. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, forgive us. Lord, I thank you for revival over this place. Revival over our nation. Revival over our state. Revival over Brazos Valley Cowboy Church. Woo, this is going to be a year of revival. And we're going to see, Lord, that our latter years are going to be greater than our former years. Let me say that again. Our latter years are going to be greater than our, our former years. I'm going to say it again. Our latter years are going to be greater 
than our former years. And what the locust and the canker worm has stolen, it's got to be repaid with interest. With interest! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Y'all keep your hands bowed and your eyes closed just for a second. Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? That's the first step. None of this matters until you make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Because once you do that, you become a child of God. And then all this applies to you. So if you never ask Jesus in your heart, I want you to make that decision today. To say, Jesus, I need you. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And at that point, you become a child of God. There's no other way to heaven. There's no other way to have heaven on earth. But first, to say yes to Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. He's the only way to heaven. He's the only way to become a child of God. So right now, today, I want you all to give me that opportunity. I want us to pray together as a church body. Everybody pray. Maybe you pray this prayer a hundred times, but help somebody that may have never prayed it. Or maybe you need to rededicate your life to the Lord today and you want to want to do that. Everybody, pray. if you're watching online, pray this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Right now, today, I make Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior. I believe by faith he died for me. He was buried in a tomb, but on the third day he rose again. And today he's alive, seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for me and my Lord, my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You know, the Bible says that when we do that, our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. So today, if, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, your name's written down in God's book. And it says no one can take your name out. Amen? And know that it doesn't matter what's going on in the world around us. We serve a God that takes care of his own. Amen. Amen. And you can have peace today knowing that. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let, let's pray and dismiss. Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, I pray for a good week this week. Lord, I pray right now that you keep us all safe as we leave here today on the roads as the nasty weather out on the highway, Lord God. Keep everybody safe and keep your angels around us. Lord, I pray, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We pray for your favor over this church, over this church body. In Jesus' name, that every need that we have is met. Every financial need, every physical need, every emotional need, Lord God, every spiritual need is met in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord God, that we, as your church, will not be shaken. Lord God, that we have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone who agrees said, amen. amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. See you next Sunday. Bring somebody with you. Amen. Okay, y'all. Hey, everybody, just forgot to make one more announcement. We 